Hello, welcome to another edition of Kiepper Comparison Picks. Today I got the final prelim fights for UFC Vegas 23. Please check out the video of the other prelim fights. I did the early prelims on Monday. I did a set of three prelim fights yesterday. And now we're here with the final prelim fights for UFC on ABC2. Okay. <clears throat> whole new group of cappers. These ones are pretty popular. Um, they don't need any introduction. You'll, you'll recognize their names if you follow, if you've seen my show before. If not, the link will be in the description for all these guys. Okay, so we've got, uh, we'll start off, we got the Bantamweight female, female Bantamweight fight between Norma the Immortal Dumont. You know who else? Who else is the Immortal? Matt Brown. He's also the Immortal. I don't like when uh, fighters use the same nickname. They do that a lot over in Russia. They like uh, Goretz. There's like five guys named Goretz. Um, Lion. They got like yeah, in that over the those promotions over there. They they got a ton of. Oh, and down in Brazil too. What's it like in Bellator? There's like four different people going by the name Pitbull. <laughs> so anyway, um, <clears throat> Norma Dumont, the immortal is. She's 5-1 as a professional. She's coming off a win against Ashley Evans-Smith by unanimous decision. However, she did get knocked out by uh, Megan Anderson. By, she caught her with a right cross, knocked her out. But um, nevertheless, Norma here is the decent favorite at minus 250. Um, she's taking on the new girl, young girl. Aaron Blanchfield, cold-blooded, cold-blooded. Cold-blooded Aaron Blanchfield is perhaps the youngest uh, employed fighter in the UFC. She is 21 years old, but that's like 21 in 10 months. Almost 22. You know, barely legal to drink. Just saying. Um, she is the underdog here at plus 210. Now, interesting tidbit. She is 6-1. She's coming off a uh, win over Brogan Walker Sanchez. United's, uh, unanimous decision. That, I do believe, was in Invicta. Um, she did... She She's on a three-win fight streak. Her last loss, her only loss, was against a very game Tracy Cortez. Um, Aaron Blanchfield... Cold-blooded. She has a one-inch reach advantage. She fights out of the Henzo Gracie uh, Jiu-Jitsu Academy in New York City. She's been training extensively with Caitlin Chukagian for this. Now, the interesting point I was going to bring up, um, Norma Dumont, she is coming down to, this is, a, like I said, bantamweight fight. That's 135 pounds. Norma Dumont, from what I heard from a, some of the cappers, she she's coming down like her walk around weight is 140, and she last time at 135 she missed weight by like four pounds. She came in at like 139. Um, so take that. Make sure you watch the scales. Watch the weigh-ins on Friday. Um, Aaron Blanchfield, she's coming up from uh, 125. So you got one uh, one of the fighters, Norma Dumont, immortal. Coming down, so she, you know she's going to already have the bigger size. She was big for, she's already big for 135. Like I said, she has trouble making the weight. Aaron Blanchfield coming up for 125, so she's going to be smaller, but some people might translate that into a little bit faster. And Henzo Gracie, she is a purple belt at Henzo Gracie Academy, but Henzo Gracie Academy is a top-notch Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu school, so... Here we go. Uh, the favorite, taking the favorite, fighting out of the Gordon Fight Team. Couldn't find much information about Gordon Fight Team, but it is in Brazil. Um, we've got, oh, three inch height advantage for Dumont. However, Blanchfield has a one inch reach advantage. Okay, taking the favorite, we've got to get a new marker, because this one just shit the bed. Okay, we've got um, 
What's going on? It's Bleed. Bleed, uh, formerly from Odds. Little news on the odds.com. They're getting rid of all of their uh, YouTube content, I guess. First, I heard a rumor it was just MMA, but then they got. I watched Jimmy the Bag last week, and he and I. I remember I took his hockey picks that day, and he said, "This is my last day with odds." But they're all like doing their own thing now. But lock of the night, he on his live show, he said, "Yeah, they're get odds is getting rid of all YouTube content or something. They're getting rid of all the content, which is puzzling to me. Why would they do that? There's it's got to be an income source, what you'd think. But yeah, they pretty much." Uh, stopped paying all these cappers to make picks and the prop shows, but MMA Lock of the Night said he is still going to do prop shows. He's going to do a live watch along with the weigh-ins and the chat, and you know, there's a lull time in between weigh-ins when people, the fighters are getting dressed and get undressed, and you know, there's time in between, and that's the time he's going to be busy with the chat. So anyway. Speaking of Lock in the Night, he's also taken Norma Dumont, L-O-T-N. Um, then we've got uh, UFC Gambling Addicts. He said no bet here for Leighton. However, he is going to head. If he has to take a pick, he's going to take Dumont by decision. Of course, the decision prop here is not going to pay. Hey, look. Minus 280 to go over two and a half rounds. So the, the bookies, everybody's got this female fight. They got it going to decision. If you think it's for somehow it's going to end before the two and a half rounds, a plus 220 payout for your, that means, you know, your $10 bet will gain you $22. Okay. Um. Then we got Brady from DFS by the numbers. He also... Taking Dumont by decision. Decisions is a popular bet here. And finally, we've got Clint McLean from the Die Hard MMA podcast. Also, cut from odds. I mean, they, yeah, odds clean house, cut everybody. Clint is also taking Norman Dumont. So this is a full capper consensus that is when. Every capper that is on the show takes the same team or same fighter. They all take the same side. In this case, everybody's taking the immortal Norma Duma to beat the young up-and-coming Aaron Blanchfield. And uh, she is going to, Norma Duma, what sold me on this, one of these guys, I forget which one, man. I watch all these. I get I get them confused. I don't write it all down. But somebody was like, when it comes to female MMA, strength is a key factor. And here, Norma Dumont, because she's coming down from like 145 down to strawweight to one, or bantamweight, I'm sorry, 135, she is going to be the stronger However, this girl Blanchfield, she's got fire in her blood. She's she is 21 years young. Um, we got yeah, Norma Dumont, 30. So I mean, take that for what you will. Blanchfield, 21, almost 22. They're both but five and one, six and one. However, Dumont does have those a uh, little bit more. UFC experience. Blanche, this is Blanchfield's debut. She's from Invicta, but she's you know she's got some good experience too. Three win win streak. Oh, this is tough for me, but I'm gonna <clears throat> for tapology. I'm taking Dumont. However, I'm gonna for betting purposes. I'm gonna take Dumont in a part this parlay too, but for betting purposes, I'm gonna sprinkle a little live. Money on Blanchfield, dog or pass for these female fights at plus two ten. So, you know, I'll spr sprinkle ten dollars on that to take a chance to maybe get twenty one, double my money, or maybe I should. Yeah, that I that's better chance than that. The under. So, and maybe I'll even. Maybe she can get, nah, I don't think submission, that's crazy. But she does go to Henzo Gracie Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu Academy, so never know. 
Okay, moving on. Next we've got uh, Scott Holtzman. Hot sauce. Lightweight taking on Mateus Gamrot, the gamer. Gamer Gamrot. Um, Scott Holtzman comes in with a record of 14 and 4 as a professional fighter. He's the underdog here. Plus 192. Uh, they're, you know, double, almost double your money. He's taking on Mateus Gamra at minus 227. That's a lot of juice to put on the uh, the Polish gamer. But um, let's get into this anyway. Scott Holtzman, he's uh, coming off a spinning back fist loss to Benel Darius. Very impressive knockout in round one. Uh, Mateus Gamra. He's coming off a loss against uh, Gurren, Gurren Kutatladze. Kutatladze. That was split decision loss. So split decisions, depending on who you ask, they could, you know, they could go either way. So they're split decision. That means one of the judges picked them to win. So anyway, take that for what you will. Now, uh, Scott Holtzman is fighting out of Jim O in North Carolina. There's also Joe Selecki fights out of there. So does like people like uh, maybe you've heard of Ricky Rainey, John Salter, Brian Barberena, also not potentially notable names out of Jim O in North Carolina. Okay, Scott Holtzman. <clears throat> yeah, he's he's kind of uh, he's been in the game for a while. He is thirty. I didn't write it down, but I want to say he was like thirty six, maybe thirty. Yeah, I shoot, I should have wrote it down. I didn't write it down, but I want to say Holtzman's toward the plateau age for lightweights, like 36. And Matisse Gamera, I want to say, is like 30. I do, I didn't write this thing down, but whatever. So let's get into this. Let's see what these people are taking. Um, Matus Gamera fights out of American Top Team in Coconut Creek, Florida. He used to fight out of Zerwani Smok in Poland but yeah a little improvement in his game going American top team with all those fighters down there very reputable training facility so taking the favorite in Matus Gamera we've got Clint taking him by decision for the gamer then we've got DFS by the numbers. That's Brady also taken by decision. Um, Layton, UGA, UFC Gambling Addicts, taken by decision. You see where this is going. You see it trending. MMA Lock of the Night also taking Gamrot. And finally, what's going on? Bleed. And it sucks that odds is, you know, I'm going to miss that. But uh, lock of the night. He says he's still going to bring this stuff together. Like he's having a, he's still going to do the parlay prop thing or the prop bet show type of deal. He's still going to have special guests. He's going to have a breakdown with uh, Clint, Prediction Guru, and Bleed. And he said Cody Staffick, he's still in the mix, too. He's going to start alternating guests. He's got Newsom from MMA Play 365 coming on the show. He's got other... He's Yeah, he's still... He's still MMA Lock and Night is still going to give you content for your viewing pleasure. Um, but I'm going... Uh, the link in the descriptions will be from where I got this information. So you can click that and, you know verify every, all my all the picks that I put for these guys as for their separating from odds and making doing their own thing you're gonna have to you know subscribe to their personal channels and those links will not be in the description until next week when they you know start doing their own thing I don't know how long this may be the last I know it's the last Jimmy the bag he's done at odds Clint he's done at odds I'm sure yeah I think they're all done I don't even know what kind of content Odd still has up, so we'll see. Anyway, this is a full capper consensus 
Everybody is taking uh, Mateus Gomrat, the gamer, to beat Scott Holtzman, hot sauce. I, I guess I'm going to have to go with the... Yeah, he's, the Gamrat's only got that one loss, and like I said, that was a split decision loss. So that being said, it could have went other way. Holtzman, I think he's getting up there in age. I wish I wrote it down, but I didn't. Anyway, I'm taking, I'm going with the Cappers. I'm going to take him to win. I might as well go with the trend. Everybody's saying by decision. Hopefully that makes it a plus number. If not, I'm not going to bet it. I don't bet negative numbers. I parlay them. <laughs> if it's a negative number, it's going to a parlay. I'm going to make it a plus somehow. So, or it's just not bettable. So, moving on. Next, finally, we've got the veteran Jim Miller. I did write his name down. Jim Miller, 37 years old, fighting out of Sparta, New Jersey. Miller Brothers MMA. He's got a record of 32 and 15. And speaking of records, he's breaking one. He Right now, he's tied with the most UFC fights with Cowboy Donald Cerrone. But this fight with Joe Selecki will put him in the lead, as in most fights fought in the UFC. So, at obviously at 47. There's other fighters with more fights but in the octagon, but not necessarily UFC, other promotions. These are fights in the UFC. So, um, Jim Miller, A-10. He is uh, coming off a loss against Vince Pichel, unanimous decision. He's the underdog here, plus 195, another two to one dog. And he's taking on Joe Selecki. Joe Selecki's 10 and 2. He's uh he's on a five win fight or five fight win streak. He is a minus 230 favorite here, two to one. His last win is against Austin Hubbard via rear naked choke in round one. He also fights out of Jim. O with uh, Scott Holtzman and all those boys in North Carolina. Okay, so taking the favorite in Joseph Selecki, we've got Leighton. He's saying Joe Selecki by submission in round two in the second. That's a good pick. I like I like when you get specific with your round. Let's make that a 230, a plus number. Submission, second round, that will definitely make it a plus number. Um, then we've got uh, Brady from DFS by the numbers. He is saying by decision. I'm not sure what the prop on that is. I'll look it up for you, but I don't have time today. Uh, Bleed, also taking Selecki. Lock of the Night, also taking Selecki. And finally, we've got Clint McLean from Die Hard MMA Podcast. Also taking Selecki by decision. So the another full capper consensus. Three of them on this show. Three full capper consensus. That, you know, they're all taking the favorites. But the, hey, that's the, how the ball rolls. These guys, you know, a Apparently, they're gonna probably most likely win. You know, I it's you're hard fought to find a hard fought to find a fan that is taking the underdogs on these three fights, except for like I said, I'm gonna be putting money on Blanchfield, but uh, as for the rest, I gotta I gotta go with the I can't go against the cappers in any of these. I'm also taking Joe Selecki. Against the journeyman, I like I like uh, Jim Miller, but I just can't do it. I'm gonna take Selecki by decision. Jim Miller did have that. Uh, um, he had a that lost Vince Michelle right before that. I think he had a he had like a slick submission of Roosevelt Roberts or somebody. I don't I can't remember. I can't recall right off the top of my head. But anyway, there you have it. To Recap, time check. My daughter is staying over at her cousin's house tonight. So that's, and so is my son. So that's a nice quiet night at home. 
Um, but anyway, to recap, I have uh, Norman Dumont, even though I am betting Blanchfield, but for my tapology pick so I can beat VC Dave and MMA Genie, I'm picking uh, I'm picking Norman Dumont. She should win that by decision. I don't know why I didn't write that down, but however, I will live bet sprinkle ten dollars on Blanchfield just to you know for fun. But Dumont by decision. Then I've got uh, Gamrot by decision beating uh, Scott Holtzman. Hot sauce. <laughs> And then finally, with the Capra consensus, I've got Joe Selecki beating the veteran Jim Miller. A veteran he is, man. Maybe, maybe this might be his last fight after he breaks the record. Or I don't know, maybe he's, he's 37, maybe he's still got it in him. Joe Selecki, 10 years his junior. 10 years younger at 27. So, prime out of the prime. That's how it goes for lightweights. So there you have it. Um, gather the info, place those bets, cash those tickets. Give me that thumbs up. Uh, feel free to comment, especially if you're taking an underdog, man. I, I like to root for the underdog. I just can't in this case, except for, except for maybe Blanchfield. I like, but you know what? Coming up in weight, going against Dumont, who's coming down in weight. This is a, watch the weigh-ins. If she comes in sucked weight, weak, and misses weight or something, I might have to put some money on Blanchfield, the younger, eager, hungrier female fighter. Um, but uh, yeah, parlay these. Yeah, leave a comment, especially, yeah, leave a comment anyway, whether you're in agreement with me or if you're taking a uh, underdog. Tomorrow, I'm gonna do um, four of the main card events, like not, not the main and co-main, I'm reserving that for Friday night, but tomorrow I'm gonna do the four fights for the main card. And I already started the research for it. We got uh, Kizrayev versus Dawkins, Smiling Sam Alvey and Julian Marquez, Mackenzie Dern, Nina Ansarov, and Mike Perry, and D-Rod, Daniel Rodriguez should be a good show tomorrow. I've already started the research, like I said. So stay tuned for that. Hit the bell if you want it early, whatever. It doesn't matter to me. Good luck on these bets and see you next episode.